sing aloud when the saints go marching in and I get to that part that says oh how I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in my wife always says not so fast <laughs> <laughs> now I'm never quite certain if narrator is saying not so fast because she wants me to stick around for a good long while before making my way to heaven and getting in that number or if she's saying, not so fast, because you just may not be in that number <laughs> when the saints go marching in. And the truth be told, I've never asked narrator to clarify it, because I'm almost certain it's because she wants me to stick around a good long while before I make my way to heaven and join that number. Would you join me in prayer this morning? <clears throat> Glory to God and praise and love be now and ever given by saints below and saints above the church in earth and heaven. Amen. According to jazz great Wynton Marsalis, the song When the Saints Go Marching In is the unofficial anthem of New Orleans. And Marsalis says every musician in New Orleans grew up playing When the Saints go marching in. When the Saints Go Marching In originated as a 19th century Protestant hymn and remains a message of revelation and redemption. But in 1938, the late Louis Armstrong, old Sachimo himself, transformed When the Saints Go Marching In into a timeless American work of art. By the way, in Preservation Hall in New Orleans, if you ask to have When the Saints Go Marching In played, it is going to cost you. Because on January 22, 1965, the bass player John Joseph played When the Saints Go Marching In as a request. And after he did, John Joseph died on the spot. You know, when we sing When the Saints Go Marching In, we sing it as a New Orleans good time jazz song. But when the saints go marching in actually has its basis in our text from the book of Revelation. That seemingly strange book at the end of the Bible that John wrote as a word of encouragement, hope, and comfort to those early Christians who were struggling with enormous challenges in their lives, including loss of identity, loss of friends and family, and the threat of losing not just their freedom, but their lives because of their faith. John writes, and I, John, saw the number of those who were signed, sealed, and saved included in that number. And John says that number came out of all the tribes of Israel. And John says, then I, John, saw that 144,000 would receive the signed, sealed, and saved mark that would identify them as God's chosen, God's elite. That's 12,000 from every tribe of Israel. 12 times 12 times 1,000 equals 144,000 saints who were to be signed, sealed, saved, and marked, and who get to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Now, it's always important, especially on All Saints Sunday, to remember what defines being named a saint. I always chuckle whenever I ask those who attend our weekly Wednesday Bible study if they are saints. 
because always to a person they say, no, I'm not a saint. But then each of them will point to the other person in the room and say, but she's a saint and she's a saint. It's just that I'm not a saint. And they do that because most of us believe a saint is someone who has reached what really is an unreachable goal, perfection. And we also believe one can only achieve perfection and possibly sainthood after death. But in the Bible, saints are never dead people who've been canonized by the church and then given the honorific title saint. No, saints are living people who have dedicated themselves to the God revealed in Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Paul, in almost every letter Paul writes, addresses the recipients of his letters as saints. And so Paul writes to the saints in Philippi and to the saints in Thessalonica and to the saints in Rome. And often these saints that Paul writes to are behaving nothing like saints, more like ain'ts. <laughs> they are in conflict with others or behaving with envy towards one another or presenting themselves as better than others. And yet, these are the very everyday people Paul addresses as saints. And here's why. Because if you are a baptized believer and a follower of the Lamb, meaning you are a disciple of Jesus, and you've committed to living a life of faithfulness, whether you succeed at it or not, Paul says you are a saint. And in our text from Revelation, John says, I, John, saw a great multitude of people that no one could count. And they were coming, not just from the 12 tribes of Israel, but they were coming from every group, every nation, every family, and every place in the world. And they were speaking every language on earth. And then John says, I, John, realize that the number 144,000 is not an exact count of who will be signed, sealed, and saved. But that number 144,000 is a number that symbolizes the whole family of God and signifies all believers everywhere in the world who will be counted in that number when the saints go marching in. Of course, we know that John's vision is counter to the way we live our lives every day. We live in a world that says members only allowed. We reinforce the notion that differences in color, class, culture, creed, sexual orientation, and political affiliations are always front and center in whatever we do. And if, you, if your beliefs are contrary to mine, then you can't be counted in that number when the saints go marching in. But in John's vision, and in the kingdom Jesus spoke of, and that Paul wrote about, in his letters to those first Christian churches, there is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, slave nor free, white, black, brown, yellow, or red, neither rich nor poor, neither employed nor unemployed, not native-born citizen or illegal immigrants, not ex-offender or never offended, but in God's kingdom, all are included in that number and worthy of being called saints. From beginning to end, from start to finish, God's purpose has always been clear, and that is the whole earth, which includes the whole vast and diverse multitude of people on the earth. From start to finish, God's purpose is that number, marching around that throne, was meant to be an all-inclusive one. Saints aren't just those who seem to have it all figured out, whose prayer life is perfect, whose service to the, to the church and community are above condemnation and above reproach, and who left a legacy that the rest of us will spend a lifetime aspiring to. No, saints are those who find ways to seek and serve by loving their neighbors as they love themselves. And they reach out to others in need. Saints are people, everyday people, people who suffered greatly and yet praise God all the more. Saints are those who've known the pain of grief and the sting of death and somehow still find a way to sing, Alleluia, thine the glory. Alleluia, amen. I know, I know this morning that some of you are unsure about where your life is heading. 
I know that some of you can't seem to live life as fully as you desire. I know that some of you are groaning with hunger pangs and longing for a moment of relief and that you are uncertain from one day to the next day if your life has meaning or purpose. And I know some of you have been wrestling with whether or not your faith and what you believe is authentic and valid. And in these moments of fightings within and fears without, I know you are certain beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are nowhere near being called anything good, let alone a saint. Well, not so fast. Because on this All Saints Sunday, when we celebrate all the saints, when we commemorate those saints gone all too soon and those saints long gone, I'm here to remind you that we also celebrate those everyday living saints who are right here in our midst. Those saints who are now or have been part of our lives and part of our community and who've demonstrated their love of God and their neighbors by reaching out and caring for and about all God's children. And I just happen to know that's each and every one of you. That's those of you who have come out of great ordeals or times of great turmoil. And that's also those of you who are still going through great or small ordeals and who are still struggling to find help, hope, or healing for your lives. And that includes those of you who are still praying that Christ's promise to wipe away every tear will become a reality in your lives. Saints are those who live and work and believe in God's promise to walk with us and talk with us and be our great shepherd. And John the Revelator, writing from his banishment on that island of Patmos, reminds us that we are saved and we are saints, not because of anything we've done. No, we are saints because of the one who is seated on the throne and because of the one who was the sacrificial lamb of God for each and every one of us. And John says, I, John, saw them all fall on their faces and worship God, singing blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever and ever. And my sisters and brothers, may we too be counted in that number when the saints go marching in. And my sisters and brothers, may God bless each and every one of you saints, every one of you saints, every one of you saints. Amen.